in any professional sport there's so many ups and downs and it's very lonely and tiring as a professional dart player. I've been through some of them days that they're really, really tough, you know, they're, they're very scary. Darts is a really cruel game. When you're up there in the limelight, it could be really hard. Some days you have your dark days, some days you have your good days. You build your strength up, you build your positivity up, and your mind gets stronger. There is still a stigma attached to mental health conditions, especially when you are in the limelight and people unfortunately still think that why should you be suffering from a mental health condition? You have everything. These problems can affect anyone. They can impact you at any stage of your life, regardless of what you have. <laughs> I'm not going to actually say how low it actually went, but it was bad. I'll, I'll we'll leave it there. You know, I've probably had three moments in my professional dieting career where I have been so low. It's all about just admitting that you're in a bad place. And uh, I think, it's, especially as men, no one likes to admit that the weak or whatever. And I don't think it is a sign of weakness. I think it's, you deal with so much as an, an athlete that, or not even in any industry, whatever you do as a job, you know, you deal with so many pressures and stresses and there's only so much your head can take. It's a very, very difficult game. You know, you could have, you know, look at Michael Smith and MBG uh, at the world, so the nine dar, obviously, Argo Van Gerwen missing the double and then Michael Smith taken out. Uh, but like, then you've got to go back, you've got to start all over again. Aspinall's missed a dart for a place in the final. It's well and truly game on. Over the last two years, there's been a hell of a lot of stuff that's happened, not on the dart, well, bits on the dart ball, but nine times out of 10, it's been something at home that you think, how can that affect me missing double 16? But, God, it does. It's amazing. Three or four years ago, it was the, the darker days of, of feeling, you know, anxious and panicked. But that also brings along, you know, a slight bout of depression as well. When you feel like there's no way out, it, it, you kind of can't look to the future. It can feel like everything's closing in on you because you can't find a way out. Things are still going wrong sometimes when you reach the final stages of a tournament. A brave, brave performance from Michael Smith. A big thrill for the bully boy to reach his first major final, but not enough to derail the Dutch starting juggernaut. When I made the Premier League final, I was, uh, I was only 28, 27. Relatively young back then, now you've got 70 old kids coming about. But <laughs> back then it was, it was hard. So I was trying to overcome the demons by myself and just with my family and stuff. That was the hardest thing that I had to overcome. Uh, away from the, the game, uh, the confidence level in me is, is, is not great, to be honest. Uh, uh, I try and just take my mind off by doing stuff around the house. They like having a competition. I think we've got about over 40 cockerels, so that's why they're all going. <laughs> Hello. Peter Wright is a very shy person. He's not very good at DIY, but likes to have a try anyway and not not concentrate on the darts and not think about it. But when he becomes snake bite, he's a, a very com competent guy. Snake bite, Peter It annoys me sometimes having the hair done and stuff like that. I feel like uh, when I've lost, just like shaving it all off and going, ha ha, ha that to do. <laughs> Dressing up gives me a lot of confidence, as if I'm like a superhero just going on. And then if you look good, well, you think you look good, uh, you feel good inside. It works for me, but maybe it might not work for other people. Some people love to go fishing, I love to go rugby. That's what I wanted to do, that's what I was wishing I would have done instead of this sport, but unfortunate things happened and even better fortunate things did happen that I fell into it. No, it is good, I get away from life, I stand in the same spot every time I go. People know who I am because uh, it's their spots as well. Every now and again, the old picture, 
but they leave you alone. The camera comes on you every now and again when they score a try. It's just, it's peaceful, it's nice. I can go to a sporting event and just get lost. It's such an incredible form of escapism. 96 came. One remains, and that is Peter Wright. You see Peter there, trying to hold it all in. He is an emotional man. Michael Smith would be thinking, OK, I've missed out again, but he cannot get down on himself. Darts is, a, in general, is a really cruel game. In, uh, obviously, when you're up there on TV in the limelight all the time, it, it, it could be really hard. But when I lost to Peter Wright the second world, I actually questioned myself, would he ever get it next time? And then for a week after that, it was like, I'm never playing again. Like, that's me done and retiring. And then I think a month later, I was in the UK Open final, lost that. Then I was in the European final, lost that. Regardless of whether it's giving you, you know, a dream life, it's allowing you to provide for your family, you can easily understand how these players can, can fall out of love with what they've got. It was the James Wade game, you know, I've gone back to that game a lot of times, you know, it was a time when I felt at my lowest. Um, it was the first time it really affected me in darts. Um, and, you know, that was the time when I knew I had to change something. I was ready to give, it up, ready to give darts up to myself. I thought that it was getting so bad in it and I was getting so anxious in darts that, uh, you know, it was never going to work for me. So it was really important that I went out and spoke to someone and, and spoke to, you know, my family. My family knew about it, but, you know, I spoke to them a bit more in detail about, in, you know, the exact feelings of, you know, going through um, and, you know, going and seeing help. I see uh, CBT, Cognitive uh, Behaviour Therapy, which definitely helped. You know, you, you, f you find the source of where the problem's coming from. This really has been coming, and, and full credit to him. It's, it's not easy. He had, a, he had some mental issues a couple of years ago. He was suffering with anxiety and, and just doubts. I've played the sport at a, a decent enough level to know that this is difficult. Personally speaking, obviously, my injury, that was a, a very difficult period in my, in my career and in my life, to be quite honest with you. And I was in such a dark place because I couldn't play. Is my career over? What, I've not been in work for five years, I've got to try and find a job. I've got mortgages to pay and it was very tough and my head was gone. More recently than that, when my dart out was kind of kicked in early last year, I think it was in Brighton, um, I had a, basically a breakdown after my game. My head completely fell off. I'm like, I've had all the injury problems, I've come back and sorted that out. Now this has happened, so it's very tough. You know, elite sport is, you know, it's not meant to be easy, is it? otherwise everyone will be doing it. Were you flying to George Best? Yes. It's only when I left home, going through the gates, got driving to get on the motorway, I go to practice, and the darts with me, and that's when you question it, am I doing this wrong? What, what have I been doing wrong? Can I work on this? And not just going back to your normal self, going, you know what, being a 30-year-old kid locked in a bedroom, going 180, 180, doubles, doubles, don't question it. You, you'd know, you wasn't a professional once, you was working hard to be there, and just keep doing what you've done. There's no final bigger than this. There's no title bigger than this. And this time, Peter gets it right. Michael Van Gerwen offers his hand, and in doing so, hands his world crown to Peter State by right. When I won uh, my first world championships, it was like, uh, it's like a great big weight lifted off my shoulders and, uh, and it was just like wow yeah I have done it and then to win it again you know that was magical and it was like you know, you know shut people up saying oh yeah, that was that was just like one off Michael wasn't on form that year blah 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 amounts of things I've ever have lost all the heartache and everything to overcome that and to battle back and finally lift the title and I just kept believing the rest was history then This it. He was born to be a world champion. Michael Smith has fulfilled his dreams. Yeah, I find myself not revisiting them, them darker times, because I found a way to, you know, keep my head up. Life is really important. 
we're all lucky to be here. We're lucky to get to enjoy it. Uh, so yeah, I try and enjoy every moment as much as I can. Luke Humphries is the greatest darting force on the planet right now. He cannot contain his emotions. He's got every right to cry. He's got every right to enjoy this special moment. I'm enjoying playing and, uh, and I'm enjoying going home and spending time with my family also. I spoke to, obviously, Kirsty, uh, my kids, my family, and obviously they supported me through the difficult times. When you've been through the trials and tribulations that Nathan has, and speaking to him about it as well, it's quite interesting because you do have a different outlook. Yeah, it was very tough. Last year was probably harder than the injury. Um, but what do you do with that? You seek help, you seek people that are professional in that um, industry, and that's what I did. You know, I spoke to a sports psychologist, and yeah, he's worked absolute wonders on me. He's kind of reprogrammed my head, you know, try and look on positives and the ups as opposed to the negatives and the downs. There are so many dangers when it comes to using social media and the abuse that people send. They can have a really negative impact on your mental well-being. It's, it's a weird thing saying, but being like a public figure, being in the public eye, you kind of need social media, you need your feed brand, your name, your sponsors, everything. Who practices the most? Uh, probably myself. The most naturally gifted player? Probably myself. <laughs> the best player to come from your local area? Myself. <laughs> Is this just about me? Thank you. Do you want to check up on your insights, how many profiles you're reaching, how many people's reaching your profile and stuff? So having to come off that just because I didn't want to deal with that negativity, it kind of harms your... Your profile, should I say, we had to learn not to listen to it or like take it in, but when you get bombarded by hundreds and hundreds of messages, it does take its toll on you. It was really hard to see it all unfold. When Michael Smith would post some of the abuse that he was receiving online on his own social media feeds, and when you've received that abuse yourself, you can kind of relate to that feeling. And it just feels like it's suffocating you. You feel like there's no way out. You wake up, you may receive a hundred really lovely messages, but that one negative can cut through. And I think it's so dangerous when you see this abuse on social media because you never know what someone is already feeling. I'm just looking down there. Yeah. Yes. So first of all, who practices the most? Um. I reckon who... Oh, that's that again. Give me that. It's all right. Ed went then. You know, people say, oh, just ignore it. There's so many more positives, like you should have said then, than the negatives. But no, you see the negatives. They hurt. It hit me bad last year. Um, and again, I, some of the stuff that I got, I can't even say on, on camera. You say what you want about me. I'm the dark player. When you bring my family into it, then we've got a different issue. And it was getting to the point where people were bringing my daughters into it. And, you know, on a couple of occasions, I've reported it to the police. That's how bad and graphic some of these messages are. I feel like when you reach the top, everybody wants to knock you down. They want to, you know, say bad things about you or accuse you of being, like, boring and stuff. But, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't bother me what anybody says. I've achieved everything I've done by being me. You know, they don't know what you're going through at the time and they don't know how things are at home and, you know, they just come out with stupid comments and, uh and it, it doesn't, doesn't help. If I lose a game of darts, I'm like, let's see what people are saying about me. I've had a bad game. They don't know what's been going on at home this week, you know what I mean? I've played bad, I've had issues at home, health-wise or whatever, but I'm curious to see what people say. But then that will then wind me up, and then, you know, what do you do then? Do you go and have a drink, which is the easy way for, for people to deal with stuff, block it all out, but then that's then going to make me feel like, poo for the next few days. So, yeah, they, they don't see the knock-on effect of just them sending out one message. And after so many of them, you kind of question yourself. You question why you're doing it in the first place. I love to go on stage to give the fans a good show, not to come off stage for the fans to give me what they think of it. Oh, and the imbeciles whistling yeah. again, but Michael Smith ignores it. Well, we have it on good authority that the security are trying to track down the whistlers and chuck them out. We need to tackle the wider issue here, don't we? Why are they doing it? And what can we do to prevent it?
I had a moment in Brighton, like I said, no one even knows how dark I was at that time. And you think that was only 12 months ago? And I remember being on FaceTime to Kirsty. I was in tears in my hotel room. I'm not doing this anymore. What's the point? It's not worth it. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth the abuse. It's not worth the hatred. All I try to do is make money for my family and the abuse I'm getting is just disgusting. I'm like, I'm trying my hardest. I've just not good enough. I can't be bothered with it. I'm going back to work. Basically, nine to five, and that's how bad it was. Um, absolutely, you know, I'm not even embarrassed to admit, I was bawling my eyes out. I was an absolute mess. Um, and to be fair, that night, Van Gerwen and Gezi picked me up. They seen what was happening to me backstage. I was having a breakdown, they helped me out. <laughs> the darts lads all are in the same situation. We all get abused, and we know, we know how tough it is. You get beat, you're already fighting demons, fighting anything about yourself. Then you get your inboxes that you don't want to swear, but you're rubbish, you're bad, you need to do this, you need to do that, you're a bottle job. So it's not nice to see. And then your kids at school, they get told that when people are walking past, when you pick them up, they hear them say it to you, so it's not the, not the funniest thing to listen to. In terms of Michael Smith, I think it did get a little consuming for him. I remember speaking to him about it and he said, you know, why should I have to leave social media? People are telling me that I'm so fixated on it that they think I should just leave Twitter, but why should I have to give this up? Why should I let them win? He saw that as a way of letting them win. To respond as he did, when people are questioning your mental strength, when people are calling you a bottler, to put that to one side and say, I can do this, I can overcome these demons, I think that shows he is one of the strongest people mentally in this game. The emotion, the emotion from Michael Smith after nine finals, eight of them losing, Michael Smith is now a major champion. They're the hardest things to deal with and if you don't know what you're going through either, you could have a lot of demons in the back of your head and they're just fueling that fire and you need to realise that at the end of the day we're still humans, we're still doing a job. We just got lucky that we do what we love and it, it's plain and simple, it's like that. Oh. End of the day, I'm a dart player, she's trying to make some money, it's like everyone else out there and that's what they don't see. Just because they see you on TV, they see you as a different person, but you know, I'm still a human being with, with family. I'm just a good dart player, simple as that. I used to get quite down on myself when I, you know, never used to play very well or used to lose, but I feel like I'm a lot stronger about that now if I lose that, you know, I can accept it and, you know, accept that, that next week can be better or, you know, you can improve next month if it's, you have a couple of bad weeks and, uh, you know, just not listen to people's opinions and negativity. That's a good paddle, all right? Yeah. Good paddle. Well, it'd be good if Dolby was there. <laughs> yeah, it'd be mint, wouldn't it? Well, honestly, I do feel bad for him. Ah. The lads that I knock around, they're all good lads, and we all, we all go through these things together, and we have a team, shall we say, and other individuals, but, yeah, we stick together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, have a word, huh? <laughs> I do feel like that's a, a, a massive thing for us as players, to, to get on really well. Um, you know, being on the road is really, really tough. It is. Being away from family is the toughest thing to, to do in this job. But, you know, all the, that's why all of us players get on so well. You know, you see us on stage hugging and you see some comments like, why are they hugging? Why are they? It's because we're all so close and we're all proud of each other, you know. It's important to, to sort of have like a family situation between us all. It's very, very hard and very, you know, brutal. I'm lucky enough to have uh, Joe with me. Uh, you know, 24-7, and it's like uh, she's there for when I lose, she's there for the highs when I win, you know, drives me everywhere and does me air and, yeah, you know, looks after me mentally, uh, makes sure I'm OK. But, you know, for other players travelling on their own, you know, it must be a horrible, difficult place. She's always there by my side, and, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, I've given her lots of credit because she deserves it. You know, she's an incredible woman. Uh, she looks after us as a family so well. And I, I dedicate everything to her because I feel like without her, I wouldn't be world champion. She really does help me become the, the, the best version of myself. This is a sport that's viewed by millions and everybody knows what I've gone through. If Rowan ever sees what his dad has done and, and been so openly honest to the public, if he has any problems that he can openly share about as well, especially to me, because um, I'll understand more than anybody. Once I had children, whenever it was at a low point, you kind of look at them um, and, you know, you think, 
it's not that bad, is it? You know, I've got, I've got my kids. And I think that's why something I do at the moment is on my darts case, I have a picture of my two girls. So even during a, a game, if I'm feeling a little bit down or I'm losing 3 0, not playing very well, or the crowd are on my back for whatever reason, just nip over to my table, look at my picture of my girls, and that's kind of what you're doing it for. It can be a lonely place, and when you're left alone in a hotel room, it's a very easy place for those negative thoughts to creep back in, and that's the time where having coping mechanisms can be really, really useful. A strong mind is a positive mind, so if you're being half-hearted at home, you're going to give half-hearted results at work. Do everything to the maximum, you build your strength up, you build your positivity up, and your mind gets stronger, and that's the only way I did with it. I just worked harder, built my mental strength up, and yeah, now I'm here now. The way I felt and the things I was going through, that you know, you, you've got to make that step, otherwise you're never going to get better. And uh, so for me, I went and obviously see someone, and you know, it, it's a it's a lovely environment. You feel really relaxed. You know, you go through all the, the the thought processes. You know, before you go through them anxiety attacks or panic attacks, whatever anyone, anyone goes through, and you know, you find out what's causing them, and you know, where did the root of the of the problem come from? Um, and it's just about talking, really. And sometimes it's nice to just talk to someone that. You know, you don't know, but they're also going to help you find out the root of what's going on. There is a way out, and it's so important to not be too hard on yourself, which sounds so easy. It's hard, but when you get to do something that you enjoy and you're passionate about and you get to smile, it is so worth the fight. Starting that conversation could help to alleviate that pressure that you're feeling. All the stuff that's happened over the last four or five years, of course, it's made me so much stronger. It's unbelievable because I've overcome an injury. I've overcome pretty much a breakdown. I've overcome diarrhoeus. I've pretty much overcome so many things that will probably, even one of them things could end someone's career. And I've overcome a lot plus other stuff. Um, and if I can overdo, if I can overcome all that, still be winning Premier League nights, still be winning major TV events, still be in the top four, I could do anything out. Yeah, come on. There he is. <laughs> 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 Impressed you can do weird things to you. <laughs> the two greatest moments in my life are sat up there now. No, I can't answer more. I really can't.